For this lab, we're going to be looking at an activity two axis tilt sensor. We're going to be recording the X and Y axis when we tilt our breadboard. So the object of this activity is to build a simple tilt sensor using the ADXL327. We'll look at that in a second and observe how the output voltage varies with an inclination on X and Y axis. So whenever we move it, we are going to turn our motion into a signal. So the background. A tilt sensor is used for measuring the tilt in multiple axes on a reference plane. They produce an electric signal which is proportional to the degree of inclination with respect to the axes. The tilting position is measured with reference to gravity and enables the easy detection of orientation or inclination. In our activity, we're going to be monitoring the two tilt axis, which is X and Y, using our accelerometer. The function block below is how the integrated circuit is presented. So this is the actual uh, modules inside of our ADXL327. We have the power for it. We have actual op, uh, not op amps, but output amps inside of it. We have an AC amp, we have a DMOD, and we have these X outputs, a Y output, and a Z output. Now um, we can continue looking at these. From here, um, we're actually going to look at the actual um, diagram for it and we're going to make it on our breadboard. We're also going to look at the states for our chips, not the states, but the actual pinout for the chip. That's very important to make sure we wire it up correctly. Um, and so we have the X output, the Y output. I don't believe that we're going to be using the Z output here because we're only monitoring two channels, which is the X and Y, but the Z output is very similar. So the ADXL327 is a small, low power, complete three axis accelerometer with signal conditioned voltage outputs. It can measure the static acceleration of gravity in tilt sensor applications as well as dynamic acceleration resulting from motion, shock, or vibration. The output signals are analog voltages that are proportional to air acceleration. Our chip uses a signal structure for sensing the X, Y, and Z axes. As a result, the three axes sense directions are they're highly orthogonal with little cross-axis sensitivity. And this is how it'll work. So this is the top of our sensor, and we have our Z, Y, and X. We have these materials here. We're not going to be using all of them, specifically the LEDs and the resistors, um, because this is just a little bit extra that we're not going to be doing. We're going to be doing the very basic hardware setup, but this will be linked in the description for if we wanted to do this more. There's not that much more work. This is what we're going to be building on the breadboard but the little more work that we would do with our LEDs is gonna look something like this, and the breadboard is going to look like this. And when we have our X and Y outputs, our LEDs should light up depending on how we move them. We also have these chips in here, and I believe that's to also amplify our voltage output. The signal that we're gonna get with this is not gonna move very much on our waveform when we go to test it. A way to improve this would be to use an instrumentation amp and it's going to be mentioned a little bit later. However, we're not going to be doing this either. But again, we're not going to be doing this. We're just going to be looking at this tilt sensor with our breadboard. And so now we go to our breadboard. For the hardware setup, we're going to start with our solderless breadboard in the circuit presented in the diagram that was in the previous um, slides, not slides, but the previous part where we looked at, we're going to be building it here. So we have this figure with the capacitors and these are the capacitor, one capacitor is placed close to our ADXL327 and the supply quins adequately decouples the accelerometer from noise on the power supply. So we're going to connect our capacitor with the power and then it's going to be then connected to our actual accelerometer. The reason why we have the capacitor is just to remove any noise. For our applications, a 0.1 microfarad capacitor is acceptable, and that's what we're going to be using here. Um, on the X out and Z out pins, a capacitor must be added to implement a low pass filter for anti aliasing and noise reductions. Remember, when we have a low pass filter, we're basically going to have a open circuit at low frequencies. So at higher frequencies, then it'll act as a, um, not closed circuit, but a short circuit, and this will allow the current to flow through. 
and then we can refer to the data sheet that I'm going to have um, just up here that we can use when we're making our actual breadboard for this. So now officially starting the breadboard, we're going to grab the heart of our breadboard. And the heart of this breadboard is going to be the accelerometer itself. This is the ADX L327, and it's going to look something like this. So it has the actual chip name right here, and then it's going to have pins one and 16. For our application, we are going to have pin one facing down here. And we're just going to plug it in all across the bridge of our breadboard. So we can put it just right in the middle like this. And we're going to push it firmly until it gets stuck in our breadboard. Once it's in our breadboard, we are going to have the power that we're going to be dealing with now. Again, we're going to be using a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. It's going to look something like this. Uh, mine says BC104 on it, and it looks like a little spider. And so now we can just put this somewhere over here. The power is going to flow through this capacitor and then into here. This is going to go into our um, pin, I think it is pin 3. And that is the COM pin. So from here, we can actually just grab our wires. Um, we know that it's not just gonna go straight into this capacitor. It actually has to pass through our pin 14, which is right here. And pin 14 is going to be our voltage supply. So that's where we get our power from. So first, it's gonna go into this pin. That means we are gonna go from our power rail down into pin 14 like this. So we have 16, 15, and 14. And that is in the same column. So our actual um, accelerometer is now powered. Now we're going to take this, so there's going to be a node here, and we are going to split this off, and it's going to go across our bridge into the capacitor. So it's gonna look something like this. So it's going to go from here into this node, and then it's going to go into our capacitor. From our capacitor, it's going to go into the COM, which is pin 3. We can just use a small yellow wire for that one. I'm just going to go from pin 3 into this next one over. We can see that this wire doesn't quite reach. It's not in the same column. So I'll just take this capacitor and I'll move it over just one. And so I'm just stretching out the legs a little bit. So we have the power going in here, it goes into the voltage supply, then it goes across here into your capacitor, then the capacitor it's going to go into the COM. And then from here, all it needs to do is go to ground. So we'll get a small grounding wire, and we'll go from here into the other um, power rail down here. But it's not going to be a power rail, it's just going to be acting as a ground rail. So we can just put this in like this. And now this is grounded. We are going to now look at our X and our Y outputs. So we're going to use two 0 0.047 microfarad capacitors. They look like this, they have a blue head. And so we'll put these over here and then we're gonna to get to them in a second. This is to, um, again, have our low pass filtering. And when we have a low pass filter, it's going to act as an open circuit. We want only um, the low pass to go through. So now we can connect these. Looking at the pinout, we can see that our X output is on pin 12. And so if we count these down, we have 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. So it'll be like this middle one right here. And it's gonna go and terminate just right here, like that. So looking like this, we can go into our first capacitor. And the first capacitor is gonna be right here. Now our Y output is going to be not the next pin, but the pin after this. It's going to be pin 10. So we have 10, we have 12 here, so it's gonna be 11. And so our next pin is going, that's right here is gonna be 10. Notice how we skip a column in between them. So we're gonna go from here, and then we're gonna go into a pin. Now these are very close, so I'm actually going to make this in the very next column and not a column over. And then I can put this one into this column. So it's gonna look like this. Now we can take our other capacitor and we're going to plug it into this column and then right over in the next one. So that is what those two capacitors are gonna look like. Just slot it in right that for X and Y. 
Now, for this, what we want to do is then ground both of these. And what we can do is take this first capacitor, we can see that current is going to flow through here and into this lead. And out of this lead, we need to take it to ground. Same thing with this one, out of this lead needs to go to ground. So what if we took both of these and we connected them with a small jumper wire? And we can, if it's too close there, I'll just connect them down here. It's still gonna be the same thing. They're just gonna be um, connected. And you gotta make sure it's in the same column so we ground both of them at the same time but we're going to use the same wire to ground both of them. We can see now that the right lead for both of them is connected. Don't want them touching, so we'll move it over it. And now we can pull this down to ground. So we'll take a longer wire. Remember, this is our grounding. And so we're gonna go from here and we can go into this power rail right here. And so this is it for the simple circuit. Now, again, this is not going to be very strong. If we wanted it to be stronger, we could take this instrumentational amplifier and apply it. We've worked with this previously and I'll throw the pin out on screen. All we need to do is power it and then we're gonna have some input. Uh, this was with the thermistor. So you could just take what we use there and apply it here. Um, we could just put it, if we were going to use it um, anywhere that we weren't in the breadboard, I would probably do it like right here or possibly even over here. We would just need to power these pins. Uh, we would possibly use a resistor or something between our RGs. We would have our output we would have a reference and yeah, then we would use that to plug in here. Now from here, all we're going to do is plug in the actual Digilent waveform. We should make sure that of course the power is off before we even use this, before we even attempt to work with it. We're going to open the waveforms and now we can plug these in. And so for our waveforms, we're going to take only three wires. Well, a little bit more than three, but three main ones. We're going to have our voltage input, the voltage plus, be on this top rail. Then we're going to have a ground, which is this black wire. Any black wire from the analog discovery is fine. And it's going to ground these. Now, the wires with the white stripe, and so it's going to be these top ones for me, these are going to be grounded. And so we can ground these. And the ones without the white stripe are the actual channels that we're going to, well, they're both channels, but these are gonna be grounded. These channels are going to be used to monitor this. And so we want to monitor our X and our Y outputs, right? And so that means we are going to monitor our X, which is going to be the first one. I think it's X, it could be Y. I might be saying that wrong, but we're monitoring one here. And then our channel two is going to monitor this other one right next to it. And I've plugged this first one into the wrong column. It should be over here in the same column as this one. So these two are in the same column and these two are in the same column. And that is how our breadboard is going to look. Now we can go to our waveforms. So in our waveforms, what we're gonna to want to do is a few things. The first is we're going to set our power supply to be three volts. We're not going to be touching our wave gen for this one. Um, we've previously dealt that with the thermistor and we would have to do it again if we included the instrumentational amplifier. And now we're gonna go to the scope and we're just looking at our channel one and two. So both are gonna have to be selected. We can turn on our scope. It's going to be armed. We can also turn on our power supplies as well. And so this is what it's going to look like. Um, from here, all we need to do is tilt our board. So if we tilt it up like this, we can see that it is moving that axis. If we tilt it like down like this, the other way, it's going to move the other axis. And if we tilt it this way, it's gonna move our blue, and this way, it's gonna move our blue the other way. So really, we're just tilting our breadboard, and we can see how this moves. And now I'm just moving it in circles around, and we can see that these lines are moving as they should be. And that is it for the accelerometer and how we would look at the waveforms for it.